Alrighty, so the game gave me a bunch of tutorials that I can read, uh, the Battler's Tomes. Those are just basically a bunch of things to tell you how to play this game. If you're wondering what this game actually is, it's a parody of Final Fantasy games, like early SNES ones, but uh, the battle system is a lot more complicated than, than uh, you would expect. So this guy, the ultimate Hellbane, I can I can use either Zalbers, which are magic spells. I can counterattack, and I can use an item, or I can attempt to run away, uh, or I can use a regular attack with Blitz. So I choose the enemy, and then I can choose which uh, action I want to use. So Zalber Slash does uh, is very accurate and does damage to things that don't have any brains. Stab Dash does physical damage, and it works any against enemies with low guard. And the Zeta Flash is, sets back all enemy turn counters by 20%. I'm going to stick with using the Zalber Slash mostly, because that will do the most damage. And what I need to do is, during the entire course of the Zalber Slash, you need to spam the attack button to get it to work. Uh, to, to do the most amount of damage here. Uh, for Charles Barkley... Uh, what I need to do is I can do a free throw, I can do a forward jumper, or I can do just a regular jumper attack. So uh, if I do the free throw, then I can, uh, that's low damage, and uh, it shoots two shots targeting left and right, so that's useful for hitting multiple enemies. Uh, the I can pass it, which does very high damage, and has a chance to miss. Actually, there's a lot more attacks than I remember having. I guess um, maybe I didn't have the right things equipped. I don't really know, but I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the pass attack this time, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit different for people that watch this live. This is gonna be a completely different way of attacking. I don't remember how it's gonna work, but I think I need to. Oh God! All right, so I need to release this as far to the left as I possibly can to do the most amount of damage. No, oh, eh. did it. Wow, that actually does a lot of damage. 112 damage is like twice the amount of damage I was doing from uh, uh, beforehand. All right, let's go up through this uh, tunnel here. And yeah, this is a um, this is an interesting part of the game because I remember the first time I played through it, I actually died here, and I found a section to be incredibly difficult. This time around, I'm hoping to avoid that happening. I don't think I got anywhere near doing full damage there. That's definitely not how you're supposed to use a basketball there, Zomballer. <laughs> In fact, if you do kick your basketball, that's a really great way to ruin your basketball. Uh, it gets very, very lumpy and shitty if you do that. <laughs> yeah, the first time I played through this, I actually died in this section. And it, I found it very, very, very difficult. Um, after that, the game got stupid easy, but this first section is a bit of a marathon here. The sarcophagus, it's open. Yes, Barkley. Ancient b-ball magics haunt these halls, causing the dead to rise. Is that a joke? Are you trying to bamboozle me? The joke's on you if you choose not to believe me. But forget it, Barkley. You're an old man stuck in your ways. You'll soon see the truth. We'll see about that. Uh, wonder if it's actually a website. Did you guys know that the Space Jam website is still up and online and you can go to it? It's still there. They've never taken it down. And they haven't changed it since the movie came out either. So you can go and see some 90s promo materials. Anyway. What's this? A sarcophagus? Yes, Barkley. This is the final resting place of a baller long lost to the annals of history. In my spare time, I like to study the inscriptions around the sarcophagi and glean as much knowledge as I can about the ballers that reside within them. I'm a bit of a b-ball historian, you see. So what have you learned from them? Oh, this and that. Mostly they are about shoes or incredible plays. Nothing particularly amazing. There has been one I've been struggling with recently, though. It goes into quite specific detail about a disaster that will take place in 2053. It has to be a mistranslation or a bad calculation. There is almost no way this could happen. Like the Chaos Dunk in Manhattan? No, no, don't get me wrong. This is a tragedy, but... 
but what I've been reading, it can only spell the disaster of mankind. I... I see. No, I don't think you do. Yeah, so, a destruction is coming, uh, greater than even the, the chaos dunk that Charles Barkley unleashed upon the world. I think it was like 20 years before the, before the post-cyberpocalypse. So I guess just the, the, the cyberpocalypse would be the way to grammatically make it make sense. I don't know. Alright, so we got a bunch of ball brains. Uh, again, well, for the sake of changing things up, let's do the, let's do the stab dash. I think I did a very, very poor job of that. I'll need to read how to actually do a stab dash so that I can make sure that I don't just completely waste that guy, the ultimate Hellbane's turn. <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, look, Le Le uh, not LeBron James, um, the, uh, Charles Barkley's health bar is already down to, like, two-thirds of what it's supposed to be. Alright, so let's look at the way that the stab dash actually works. Press the cancel button to stab dash. Press when the symbols turn red. Works well against enemies with low guard. That was the wrong spell. Whoops. Oh well, I can... I'll do a jump shot real quick just to dunk on the ball brain there. And now if I use the stab dash... Cancel. Oops, I... Ah, man! The stab dash is a lot harder to do than I remember it being. There's a reason that I kind of don't remember using some of these attacks here. Boom. 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 I did not do very good there. Yeah. So, um, the ultimate Hellbane, he's like the, the wizard character, as opposed to the, as opposed to LeBron James, not LeBron James, I keep calling him that, uh, as opposed to Charles Barkley, who's the, who's like the, 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 the beefy, uh, Cloud Strife-esque character here. <laughs> this tomb belongs to the B-Ball All-Star, Magic Johnson. I was never fortunate enough to see it, Barkley, but the texts state that the two of you had a number of terrific showdowns. I believe the phrase that would have been used in your times was that you rocked the house. I could see you no greenhorn when it comes to pre-21st century B-Ball vernacular and colloquialisms. I shall... Take that as a compliment. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we're getting to the stuff that uh, is actually new to me again. New to me in a very, very old sense. And that I have played this game all the way through, like, seven years ago. So, oh, I was going to interact with that statue, but instead it's time to slam jam. Thank you, ma'am. Let's, uh, spam the Zauber attack there. I kind of wonder, um... This is just a general point in video games. I have to wonder if, uh, in, in, um, in a lot of video games that have mechanics where you have to, like, rapidly tap a, tap a key over and over again, I wonder if there's some sort of built-in rate-limiting thing for balance purposes. Because it would be pretty annoying, uh, or it would be pretty broken if you could just, uh, put on, like, an auto key tapper or something like that and just blitz your way through an attack and deal a lot more damage than what was uh, expected for you to do. There's actually a uh, an interesting anecdote about that that I can remember from TF2, but first I'm going to talk to a statue. You recognize her, don't you, Barkley? Teresa, the patron saint of slams and jams. But what's that got to do with me now? These truly are dark times we're living in. If you've forgotten your formal mis for former mistress of b-ball, Teresa. That shit doesn't matter anymore. There's no place for b-ball in this world. I don't see the glory of slams and jams when I see this statue. I see only broken dreams and hollow memories. So be it. The ball in the center. That is... Yes, Barkley. The ball. Rather, it is not the actual ball you are trapped in during the space jam. But it is a scale representation of it. I studied both this statue and this tomb extensively in my research, and have found it to be quite fascinating. This is the crypt of... M Muggsy... Bogues? Bogues. And Patrick Ewing. They were both in the ball with me. They were close friends of mine before the purge. Sometimes I... I miss them. The ball. It contained massive powers. Of course you knew this. You were inside of it. You were its source of power. 
There's something I've always wanted to ask you, Barkley. What was it like to be trapped inside a bee ball? I, I don't remember much. It was dark. I remember feeling so weak. So weak. But then again, they were harvesting my bee ball energy. There is no doubt in my mind that once the Monstars won the Space Jam, they would have used the ball for ill purposes. Possibly even enough! Let's move on. Wait, what's this? Got one bee ball shards. As if you can shard up a bee ball. This is the final resting place of Muggsy Bogues, one of the finest point guards in basketball history. Um, what team did Muggsy Bogues play for? I don't remember. Because I don't actually remember who they are at all. <laughs> he was more than just a point guard. He was a good friend. I, I was responsible for his death. He was one of the first killed in the Great Bee Ball Purge. I never got to say goodbye. If you hear background music, it's because there's a damn hippie festival going on down the street and they're playing, like, I don't know, hippie, like, guitar rock blues music. So, sorry about that if that's distracting. Wha- what's this? Did a tear just come from the sarcophagus? Got one bee ball tears. Th thank you, Muggsy. Thank you. What does this one say? It says... Here lies Patrick Ewing, born a slave, died a starting center. True words have never been spoken. Just before the great bee ball purge, he said that I was like a brother to him. Like the little brother he never had. He was my best friend. Patrick, I... I just wanted to say goodbye one last time. What? What's this? Got one bee ball tears. Alrighty, and with that, I have finally moved on to parts of the game that I actually don't recall because I haven't played this section before. So this will have a lot more uh, me actually laughing at the jokes in this game rather than me um, pondering them with a lot of uh, nuance. Anyway, so what was I saying? Right, uh, I was talking about games that have to rate limit spamming the attack buttons. I remember uh, back in the early, early days of Team Fortress 2 that uh, what you could do was there was a pistol weapon in the game and what you could do was it was semi-automatic so it was um, it, it would shoot a bullet every single time you press the attack button and it didn't have a limit on how fast you could do it so that meant that if you were fast enough you could fire a bullet every single frame which was really, really powerful. I learned a new skill, Showboat Jam. Ultimate Hellbane learned Watered Salber. Uh, so anyway, what you could do is you could put the attack button on your mouse wheel and then spin it, and then the mouse wheel would spin fast enough to do a bullet shot in every single frame. You had to patch that pretty, pretty uh, swiftly in the game's history. <laughs> is this another statue of the ultimate b-ball? Yes, Barkley. The ring around it symbolizes the ring of friendship formed when Michael Jordan helped the Looney Tunes defeat the Monstars in the Space Jam. The power of the ultimate b-ball is revered by ballers, but also feared. They recognize the unlimited potential of a ball containing the abilities of the best ballers ever, but also knew that if the ball got into the wrong hands, the damage could be irreparable. Don't give me a history lesson. I was at the Space Jam. I was part of the ball. I know firsthand the immeasurable power that the ball contained. Don't patronize me. But I, there, there was this. This did happen in the plot of Space Jam, right? This did happen in the plot of Space Jam, right? Like the monster sucked up all the power of like other basketball yeah, players. Yeah, so including Charles Barkley and like Patrick Ewing, Lindsey Bones, and like Larry Bird and stuff. They took oh, their yeah. powers in the ball uh -huh. and then gave it to themselves. Uh -huh. So because the aliens were challenged to play basketball. Right, yeah. And so Michael Jordan had to step in. Uh-huh. Uh, he was recruited by the Looney Tunes to defeat basically all of these NBA players. Yeah, okay. Team. Okay, I remember that. I think it's hilarious that this is like, it flips it around so Michael Jordan's the bad guy in the, in the Space Jam canon. And... <laughs> 
and uh, Charles Barkley has to be the good guy. I guess Charles Barkley wasn't necessarily the bad guy he wasn't in the Space bad guy. Jam. He just got his power stolen. Yeah. Anyway, you are correct. You don't need a history lesson. Thanks for the history lesson, by the way. Let's move on. <laughs> oh boy, more sarcophagi. <laughs> this is the tomb of Larry Johnson. L Larry, I've I've never seen a man slam like he did. He'd get this look in his eye. This wild look that told you he, that something was up. And then out of nowhere, he'd snatch the ball and slam it like a true mamma jamma. There was so much I could have learned from him. There was a lot we all could have learned from him, Barkley. But there's no looking back. We can regret our mistakes for all our lives, or we can keep moving forward like he would have wanted. You're, you're right. We always have to keep moving forward no matter how bad it hurts. Wait. What's this? Got one b-ball tears. Thank you, Larry, and goodbye. <laughs> this sarcophagus is exactly six feet six inches tall. This, this has to belong to, yes, Sean Bradley. Is that how it's pronounced? I assume so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going through a difficult period of my life, and I wasn't sure I could trust white people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ahead of its time. Holy shit. Sean, Sean helped me out and made me realize that it's not the outside that matters, but the inside. He was a good center, Barkley, but he was a better man. Goodbye, Sean. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Wait, what's this? Got one people. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Oh, good lord in heaven. Thank you for this wonderful video game. Oh, Jesus. And that's where we're going to leave things off. Oh. 